It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. The show where headshots are worth 10 points. Oh, Excellent. I am your host, Stimulator, and there's a saying that in this world, nothing is certain except for death and taxes. And despite the round the clock efforts of some of the world's top biotech engineers, scientists, and medical professionals, it's true that even the rich fucks who rule the world still can't buy their way out of the inevitability of ultimately becoming worm food. Can I ask you a question? What? How can we all have died at the same time? The Salmon Moose. But they sure as shit don't pay fucking taxes. Yadding and equestrian competitions aside, billionaires have one concern in life, and that's how to hang on to what they got and turn it into even fucking more. Here, one dollar. <laughs> And so it's no surprise that the super rich motherfuckers who through their political puppets crafted the international banking system made sure that it included an intricate network of shady fucking tax havens set up in countries all around the world. This way, they can rest comfortably in their mansions secure in the knowledge that their vast fortunes won't be wasted on trivial things like helping to fund roads. What are you doing to the street? We're fixing it! What the hell does it look like? Clean drinking water and public schools for all of us dirty proles. Four years ago, a report published that estimated that the total value of assets stashed away in offshore tax havens at upwards of 32 trillion fucking dollars. And you could write off the world's debt in a day, in an hour, in a minute. That's around 42% of the combined GDP of all the countries of motherfucking Earth. Three quarters of the world's cash is hidden away in places exactly like this. This incredible pool of idle fucking wealth is shielded from public scrutiny by an army of corporate lawyers through the accounting magic of shell corporations, which are fake fucking companies set up to manage assets and to hide exactly who owns what. An entire alternative economy and the only entry qualification, the services of a good tax lawyer. But on Saturday, April 3rd, us lowly pros got a sneak peek behind the gilded curtain when 11.5 million confidential documents were leaked from the corporate law firm of Mossack Fonseca. Welcome to Panama. Casablanca without heroes. The so-called Panama Papers exposed the directors and shareholders of 214,000 offshore shell corporations, a list which directly implicated five current heads of state with 40 more linked via family members and close associates. In Iceland, the country's prime minister, Sigmundur W. Gunnlaugsson, was the first casualty of the leak when he was ambushed by a Swedish journalist who questioned him about his ties to an offshore shell corporation, Wintress Inc., which had direct financial interest in the Icelandic banks that failed during the 2008 financial crisis. What country are you from? What's, what's it called? The, um... What ain't no country I ever heard of? They speak English and what? If I, if I recall correctly. Go on! Well, uh, um, it's a... The day after the crisis broke, peeps in Iceland took to the streets in the largest protest the tiny nation has ever seen. Over 10,000 peeps surrounded the parliament in the country's capital of Reykjavik hurling eggs and fruit and demanding that the Prime Minister resign. And in fact, he tendered his resignation the next fucking day. You're fired. Protests have also taken place in Argentina, after it was revealed that the country's right-wing president, Mauricio Macri, who was elected on a platform of fighting corruption, had failed to disclose his connection to two offshore companies, named in the leak. He has too many offshore companies, which shows his interest has always been money laundering. And in Europe, Britain's posh, pig fucking PM. Why would you call me a pig fucker? Well, let's see. First of all, you fuck pigs. Oh, yeah. Found himself also in the hot seat. What country you from? I, I think it's a wrong premise to the question. After leaked documents revealed that his father, Ian Cameron, used a shell corporation in the British administered Virgin Islands to avoid paying tax for more than 30 fucking years. In a hilarious display of tone deaf arrogance, a solemn fucking indignation that only rich Brits are capable of pulling off, 
Cameron responded to the scandal. One of the country's leading tax lawyers, Graham Aronson QC, has stated unequivocally that this was, and I quote, a perfectly normal type of collective investment fund. Englishmen, you're all so fucking pompous. On Saturday, April 9th, Thousands of members of Britain's lower classes held a protest outside 10 Downing Street to demand Cameron's resignations, which led to some minor clashes with the fuzz. Excellent. Protesters are about to continue holding their protests until the pig fucker resigns. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. The Panama Papers were just a tiny fucking peek into the greasy world of finance capitalism. But the reality is that shell corporations and offshore banking are a completely common fucking practice. And while it's fun to watch individual politicians squirm as their personal connections to this vast Ponzi scheme are revealed, at the end of the day, it's just a drop in the bucket. Capitalism doesn't produce bad apples. The whole fucking system is rotten to its core. I'm from a little place called Great Britain, but I don't have a love or hate Britain. These words upon my page written, the things that make and break Britain.